Hello and welcome to GP Notebook TV. My name is Anish Katecha and I'm a GP in South Wales. Today I thought I'd talk to you about the recent Public Health England uh, information and guidance that came out uh, regarding um, Guillain-Barre syndrome uh, following COVID-19 vaccination. And this sort of fairly half the press came out in uh, August uh, 2021. Um, and as usual, what I thought I'd do is give you some sort of uh, quick updates and bullet points um, and sort of take a message that I feel are important for us in, in primary care. Um, so firstly, just to jog our memories, um, uh, you'll probably all remember that Guillain-Barre uh, syndrome is, is a rare condition um, where our, our own body's immune system fights and damages uh, nerve cells, uh, leading to sensory and sort of motor disturbances. Um, it's typically uh, triggered by an infection, but not always. And um, and the usual presentation um, uh, is um, a, a bilateral, um, so affecting both sides, um, pins and needles, uh, numbness, muscle uh, weakness and pain and sort of balance and coordination uh, problems. And it usually starts in our extremities and then works its way uh, and radiates more centrally. Um, so just to put it into perspective, uh, the incidence uh, of this is two per hundred thousand um, uh, of the population per year. Uh, it's more common in men um, and it's more common as we age as well. So we know that um, there are um, there are instances where uh, people get Guillain-Barre syndrome following the seasonal flu vaccine, uh, but these are fairly small um, and, and it's much worse um, having um, Guillain-Barre syndrome after the actual flu illness um, because the cases are more severe. Um, now, uh, in the United Kingdom, um, there have been uh, cases of Guillain-Barre syndrome following all types of, of, of the vaccines that we use um, uh, in this country. But um, the evidence so far is that um, the figures aren't overly alarming um, uh, compared to those expected from by chance um, or, or indeed compared to previous max vaccination uh, campaigns. Uh, and the World, World Health Organization have, have also just suggested uh, and recommended that the um, benefits outweigh the risks of COVID-19 uh, vaccination. Now, so far, there's no actual causal link between uh, COVID-19 vaccine um, and uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome, although some USA data um, has suggested that um, there is an increased risk um, within 42 days of the Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccine, but that yes has to be proven in, in the UK. Um, so really just um, some advice uh, for our patients that if um, patients have had Guillain-Barre syndrome uh, previously, which is unrelated uh, to the vaccine, then they should still continue with the, the, the COVID-19 vaccine. And actually, even if they've had Guillain-Barre syndrome following the first dose of the vaccine, they should actually still um, carry on with the same second dose as well. Um, and just as a reminder to you all, and you'll all know this, um, that if we're suspecting Guillain-Barre syndrome after the vaccine, then we should be reporting this to the MHRA uh, using the usual uh, yellow card scheme. So really here, uh, in summary, um, there's not yet been a causal link found between the COVID-19 vaccination uh, and Guillain-Barre syndrome, and we should be advocating for our patients to have the full schedule of COVID-19 vaccine uh, to prevent them um, from either getting uh, the COVID-19 virus or certainly getting a milder form of the virus uh, due to being uh, vaccinated. So I hope you found um, uh, this uh, short, sharp video useful. Um, and please do continue to tune in to GP Notebook TV for further videos. Thank you. Mm -hmm.